with the right software and a little bit of know-how can break into a web secured wireless network in about five minutes. Don't use it. You want to use WPA Personal. The WPA Enterprise, there's lots more configuration options and you have to have a special server aside from this setup to use it. The WPA Personal is sometimes also called PSK in other routers. On this router it has WPA mode auto WPA or WPA2. If we click that, we can choose WPA2 only or WPA only. Both of these are very secure modes. We're going to choose auto. On this router, what it lets us do is wireless network devices that only support WPA and not WPA2 will be able to connect. And the devices that do support WPA2, which is a newer security mode, will use that. On your router, you may see PSK and PSK2. It's the exact same thing as WPA and WPA2. The cipher type, if we click this, we can see we have TKIP and AES, or both. AES is more secure than TKIP, but some of your wireless devices may not support AES. So if you were to set it to only AES, those wouldn't work for you. And you'd have to either lower the cipher type to TKIP or buy new wireless adapters so they support the AES. We're going to leave it as both and let the router figure out which one is best to use with the different wireless adapters. The group key update interval. This is called different things in different routers, but it's usually about 3600 seconds or one hour. What this means is that every hour it will reshuffle the key that we put in down here. So if someone is next door or in a car trying to break into your network, they're going to have to do it in an hour, which is extremely difficult. We're going to have a very secure network here. Now the pre-shared key. What this is is a series of numbers and letters that you'll need to enter into all of your wireless adapters in your computers to get them on the network. And you want this key to be fairly long and again be both numbers and letters very random. Uh, you don't want to put words in and you're looking for at least 15 characters if not closer to 25. The longer the key and the more random the more secure your network will be. On a Linksys router to get to the wireless configuration settings you go to wireless at the top and it's actually broken into a few sections. We have the network name or the SSID, the wireless network mode set as mixed which we can set on this router to B or G only. This is a wireless G router. We can also set the wireless channel. It's defaulted to 6 and we can change it if we need to in case of interference from another network. For the security options we click wireless security at the top. It's set to WPA personal there's a choice for Enterprise, WPA2, Personal and Enterprise, as well as WEP, which you should never use. The algorithm, AES or TKIP, and our shared key. To make this easy to take around to all of our computers around the house, we are going to open up a notepad. And here we just need to start hitting random characters on our keyboard, numbers and letters. You can use some of the special characters at the top where the number keys are with a shift and hit and get like a dollar sign, but it's really not that uh, critical to use other characters. That looks pretty random, and it's 40 characters long, which is plenty. The maximum is 63. What we'll do is we'll highlight and we'll copy this, go back to our router setup, we'll highlight the characters it has in it now, and we will right click and paste in the key we just created. And we'll go to the top and save the settings. And the router is now secure. Now there's one more thing we need to check in the router setup to make sure that all of our computers around the house can connect to the router get online and share files and devices between each other. And that's to make sure that the router's DHCP server is turned on. In this D-Link router, it's under Network Settings. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the DHCP server settings, and it is enabled by default. If you remember, when we were talking about the internet connection types, the default connection type was for connecting to a DHCP server. 
Now that DHCP server was for connecting the router and the modem to the internet service provider. This DHCP server is actually on our router and it will make sure that all of the computers around the house get their own IP address. With the DHCP server enabled, this all happens automatically. On a Linksys router, the DHCP server setting is in the Setup, Basic Setup page, and it's enabled by default. Let's go back to the Notepad document we just created with our key. Now the reason we put this into a Notepad first is to make it easier for us to take this key to all the different computers we want to get on the wireless network. It would be tedious to write this down on a piece of paper and take it to each computer or even print it out because you still have to manually use the keyboard to enter it. What we're going to do to get around that is we're going to save this onto a USB thumb drive. And on this computer, the O drive is a USB thumb drive. And we're just going to call the file name key. Now we have this document with the key inside of it saved to a USB thumb drive. If you don't have a USB thumb drive, you can also burn the key.txt file to a CD, or if all of your computers have floppy drives, you can put it on a floppy disk. Basically, you just want to put it on something you can take around to all of your computers. Next, in Section 3, Lesson 2, we're going to show you how to update the router's firmware and set up access restrictions.